Hello and welcome to these videos about EcoStructure GeoSCADA Expert. GeoSCADA Expert is the remote SCADA and telemetry software by Schneider Electric. My name is Steve and in this video we're going to cover part two of an introduction to configuration. In the previous demonstration we had got to designing a mimic by dragging values from the Explorer. We're now going to have a quick look at how we can create more complex symbol graphics. Firstly, what I shall do is add a rectangle to the screen and we can send this to the back, make it a background, maybe change its color using the graphics properties. Just double click on the item and then pick any properties that you need. Um, now I'm going to uh, drag across a line and draw that between two places and also an ellipse which could be circular drawn using the grid lines and in this case I'm going to animate the color with status information so when you click animations you can see all the different properties of that shape and we can animate the uh, fill color with an expression. What I'm going to do here is use the second type of editor called the flowchart, um, add in a branch, edit the expression of that and change the expression to point to the status um, current state, which is in, that, in this case it's a digital zero or one and if it's true, then we're going to set it to be equal to a color of red. And if it's false, we're going to set it equal to a different color, which is blue. OK, and we'll see the color has changed instantly. And if I right click the status and hand control it back to OK, then we'll see that it changes to blue. Not only can we animate properties such as fonts, colors, and so on, but we can also change something's dynamic size or dynamic position based on a value. And it's that property that's used automatically to create the histogram. So if I drag across flow and animate to the flow as a vertical bar going up, then this is actually a bar chart. And this is one of those types of animations that's only shown when you flip into display mode and out of design mode. Okay, so you can imagine all sorts of uh, fancy graphics here, but let me save that and show that now we've saved our mimic, click display mimic, up it comes. So this pump itself is a group with a symbol embedded within it. Um, let's call or rename that symbol. And if I use control C to copy the pump group and then control V to paste it, also available on the uh, ribbon menu, then we create an item called copy of pump. And I can right click and view status. You'll see the name of that object is now my demo dot copy of pump dot flow and if we look at the mimic you'll see that the references to the graphic items in the animations just have dots in front of them and that's because these are relative references they're relative to the group that they're sitting in this means that there's no need to adjust any of these when items are copied but also you'll see that even if something did need to be adjusted that the act of copying or renaming in GSCADA automatically does that. So we could call this pump2 and everything will still continue to behave in the same way. Now using copy and paste, we can create as many groups as we like based on a single group. But to exploit the true power of this in GSCADA, we can actually convert a group into a group template. By doing that, the item changes and it is then no longer possible to put the mimic into display mode. 
And this is because the objects are no longer real, if you like, telemetry objects and SCADA objects that can take values. But what it allows us to do is to create instances based off the template, like an electronic rubber stamp. So you use the Create Instance menu, pick the group, click OK, and now this is an instance of pump. And let's call this pump instance one. As before, we can still copy and paste that to create pump instance two. They will contain the same signals and the same mimic items as the template, except that we can now no longer edit the mimic. And you'll see also that we can't edit the properties of the points. We can, however, edit the properties of the items in the template. Let's change this high limit to 99. And also, let's change the symbol. And uh, for example, change the line color of both of these items to gray. So let me do that. Having done that and saved it, you can actually see that the instance has also got that gray line color, but the original objects, which are freestanding, that they don't have the colored group, they have the original line color. In fact, we can make more far reaching changes. For example, in the template, we can add a new object such as a new string point. And you'll see that that string point has also been added to both of the pump instances. So any changes to the template affect the instance. However, there are certain properties that we wish to be different for each instance. So what we can do there is use a feature called property overrides. Now, property overrides is a way of saying these are customizable items for each instance. So if I pick on the digital point and then pick the description, state two description, state one description, and state zero description, click OK and save the property override. Let's close that. In fact, let's close all items. Now, when we look at the status point in the instance, we can see that we now have customizable properties for those descriptions. And this can extend also to point addresses, alarm severities, in fact, any property within the templated object. So this gives huge power for making configuration consistent across just a few instances of objects or even many. And this will obviously save a lot of cost and, uh, and, and test time and so on in proving out that uh, all of your site's functionality works as expected. So just a few more features of templates as we go. Firstly, even though this is an instance, it doesn't stop me adding specific items for that instance. So for example, I have a site which has got additional properties or IO or additional needs for graphics, I can just add those items to the instance. And you will see here that the little red arrow is no, not present on that new item because it's a custom item for that instance and not for the other instance. Also, we can nest instances into templates. So if we create a new group template and call this two pump site. In this two pump site, we can actually create two instances of pump. Let's call it pump one and copy and paste to make pump two. This is now our prepackaged two pump pumping station. All of the features of templates and instances work here. So we have a hierarchy of property overrides. And then wherever we want in our database, we can now instance a two pump pumping station by creating the two pump site. Give that its name, maybe a location.
and that site now contains two instances. There's even more power to templates and instances, such as the ability to convert between instances with no loss of data or configuration. And also, it's possible to use expressions or equations to control instance properties, for example, the offset numbers of I.O. So there's lots more to configure or to see on configuration, and I look forward to showing you that in a future video. But for now, please tune to the next video after this one available soon, which will be all related to device and I.O. configuration. Here's a recap of the subjects we covered this time. Goodbye, and please join me again.